Susan Diamond Riley, author of The Delta and Jack's Mysteries, The Sea Island Secret, and The Sea Turtle's Curse, stories set primarily in the Carolina Low Country. In my books, two siblings from Chicago, 12-year-old Delta and her 10-year-old brother Jax, visit their grandparents on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. But what the kids had anticipated to be just a lazy summer turns out to be filled with excitement and adventures they never expected. In the kids' first adventure, The Sea Island Secret, Delta and Jax discover a human skeleton and a mysterious message in a bottle in the salt marsh, sending them on a hunt for long forgotten treasure. Today I'll be reading to you from the sibling's second adventure, The Sea Turtle's Curse. In this book, Delta and Jax become disaster magnets after finding a strange carved turtle figurine on the beach. Now, traveling throughout the Carolina Low Country and through time itself, they must break the turtle's curse before a hurricane destroys their island home. In the passage I'm gonna share with you today, Delta and Jax and their new friend Darius have discovered that everything's gone wrong since they found the turtle carving. In hopes of breaking its curse, the kids have buried the turtle in the remains of an ancient Native American village on the island. What the boys don't know though, is that Delta has found that the turtle holds even more mind-blowing magical powers than they'd even imagined. When she tells the boys she has a major secret to share, Darius takes Delta and Jax to a spot where they are sure to find privacy. This is from a chapter titled, Chugging to Chiquita. After trying in vain to shout at each other over the roar of the boat's outdoor motor, the kids decided to postpone their conversation until they reached land. Delta surveyed the scene around them as they skimmed the warm waters leading out to Port Royal Sound. A blue and green world surrounded them. Aqua sky, teal water, Kelly and lime sea grasses, only the white sandbars and black and gray living oysters broke the pattern. Hey, look, Jack shouted, pointing at a dolphin following beside them. The animal raised its snout, squeaking and whistling, which sounded like laughter to Delta. Then it dove beneath the salty waters, waving goodbye with a splash of its tail. There she is, Chagita Island, Darius yelled over the noise of the motor. The little boat had not yet reached the wide open waters of the sound as they approached a tiny islet covered in trees. Darius maneuvered the boat up into the shallow surf, cutting off the engine and jumping overboard into water only up to his knees. Delta and Jax followed, splashing ashore and helping pull the John boat fully onto the sandy beach. Once they had tossed their life jackets aside and settled the boat, Darius spread his arms wide. Welcome to Chiquita. Why is it called that? Darius shrugged. Beats me. My grandpa said it's always been called that. Nobody knows why. Maybe it was somebody's name or something. Darius led Delta and Jax up the slope of the beach and toward a dense jungle of palms. As they reached the tree line, though, Delta noticed a narrow path through the foliage. Much like their trek down the path to the shell ring the previous evening, the three kids followed this curving trail until they reached a clearing in the undergrowth. Whoa, this is awesome, Jack said. Like the shell ring, this area was nearly the size of a football field. The ground beneath them was void of plants, instead cushioned with a thick layer of fallen leaves. Dappled light speckled the soft carpet, casting a sense of timelessness on the scene. It was hard to tell if it was day or night in this glade. In the center of the clearing stood the source of the shadowy aura, a massive live oak tree whose seemingly endless branches formed a canopy over the core of the islet. The main trunk of the tree was as big around as a backyard trampoline, and many of its branches were thicker than the trunks of Pops' largest pine trees. Delta stared in awe at the roller coaster arches and dips, noting that some branches nearly entered the ground only to rise again and continue their journey. I come here camping sometimes with my cousins, Darius said. As far as I know, we're about the only ones that visit Chiquita. Delta breathed in the earthy smell of fallen leaves. It really is amazing, Darius. 
He smiled and nodded, admiring the ancient tree. It feels kind of magical to me here, you know? Like everything else is a million miles away. Hey, look at me! Jax had climbed atop a low branch and was hiking up its slope as if it were a steep mountain trail. Once he had reached a spot well over the other kids' heads, he spread his arms wide and shouted, I'm the king of the world. Delta and Darius both laughed at Jax's proclamation, but their laughter quickly turned to gasps. As if in slow mo motion, Delta watched helplessly as her little brother's foot slipped and he tumbled head over heels toward the ground below. Oof! Jax landed with a thump on the ground beneath the towering tree. Are you okay? Delta ran to her brother who sat up and brushed leaves from his hair and clothes. Yeah, I'm all right. The ground's kind of cushiony. I guess I should have known better with the curse and all. I thought the curse was broken now, Darius said. Isn't that why we buried the turtle carving? That's part of what we've been trying to talk to you about, Delta said. Everything was just as bad when we got up this morning, maybe even worse. Yeah, I don't think the turtle belongs in the shell ring after all, Jax added. But you seemed so certain last night, Darius said, especially you, Delta. I know, that's the other thing I wanted to tell you, both of you. She looked from Darius to Jax and back again. Can we just sit down and talk? She started to lower herself to the leafy carpet, but Darius stopped her. Fire ants, he warned. I know a better place to sit. Delta watched as his foot found familiar toeholds in the main trunk of the live oak. Before she knew it, Darius was looking down at her from a 10-foot high perch created where the tree's secondary branches diverted to follow their own individual roots. Come on up. It's plenty big enough for all three of us. The siblings carefully climbed the massive trunk with Darius providing instructions from above. Once atop the fork, Delta saw that the crotch of the tree was covered in ferns, growing as if on the ground. It's like a nest up here, Jack said, laughing. I know, right? Delta sat gently in the soft ferns and gazed around her, this new perspective emphasizing the grandeur of the live oak. Even though they were 10 feet in the air, she could see that the fern dripping branches extended up beyond them. Even more amazing to her though, was that from here, at the very core of this magnificent plant, its oaken arms stretched out in every direction, traveling farther than she could see. She was sitting at the center of everything. So what's your big secret, Darius asked. The boys stared at Delta, and for the first time this afternoon, she felt she had their undivided attention. They remained quiet as she told them how the turtle carving had turned hot in her hand and how the mystical fog had rolled in and then dissipated. They sat mesmerized as she described her vision of the bustling Native American village with its cheerful and hardworking inhabitants, the regal woman, and the three identical teenage girls. No way, how could you have known that, Jack said. Exactly, that's why I was so freaked out when I saw that drawing of the girl at Darius's house, Delta said. Is this for real, Darius asked seriously. You're not just telling a cool story. No, I swear, too much is at stake here. With Tootsie getting hurt and the hurricane coming, I wouldn't just make it up. Jax nodded slowly and then turned to Darius. She wouldn't. She's a pretty no-nonsense kind of girl. The trio sat thoughtfully facing each other in their treetop hideaway for a few moments before Darius spoke. Well, the drawings in your vision, Delta, confirm that the turtle was a sacred Native American relic. And your vision proves that it's a powerful amulet. But if the turtle gave you a vision right there in the shell ring and you saw the girls get those amulets in that very spot, what makes you so sure it's the wrong place to bury it? Delta raised both arms toward the sky. Because everything is still going wrong. You said yourself that just because something has been at a certain place doesn't mean it belongs there. True, Darius nodded. What do you think, Jax? Well, Jax said, I think since I found the turtle, it's totally unfair that it gave Delta a magical vision and not me. I mean, what the heck? 
Delta rolled her eyes, but Darius chuckled. The trio sat in silence for a moment in the airy of the giant live oak. The bottom line is that burying the amulet where we did did not break the curse, Darius said. We're going to have to dig it back up and figure out another plan. Deal? He held his fist out to his friends. Deal, Delta said, grabbing Darius's bald hand. Jack shrugged and put his hand over both of theirs. Deal. Are Delta and Jax and Darius going to be able to break the turtle's curse before the hurricane comes? Read the sea turtle's curse to find out. It's available online or at your favorite local bookstore.